Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic 2 version 12. In this video, I want to demonstrate some of the new features that are found in this, the latest version of Lightroom Classic. And I must say, I'm very excited about some of these new features. Now, of course, like all updates to Lightroom Classic, they now have support for some new cameras and lenses. I'll have that listed in the description below this video, but I want to really show you some of the new features that I think many of us will find to be very useful. Now, as you can see, I'm in the develop module. If I go over here and I hover over this little band-aid, you may remember that you get a tooltip that used to say spot removal. Now it says healing. And if I open that up in the past, there were two different tools here. There was a clone removal or a clone tool. There was the healing brush. So a clone brush, healing brush. Those are still there and they work exactly the way they always worked. Next to that is this little eraser. And if I hover over that, you'll get a tooltip saying it's the content aware remove tool. They've taken some of that technology, that content aware technology that's in Photoshop and they added it to Lightroom with this tool. It's super easy to use. Only two, uh, two sliders. The top slider is the size of the brush and the bottom slider opacity is the opacity of the brush. So if you have a brush set at opacity 100, you'll be able to uh, remove something from the image totally. For example, I don't like this freckle, let's say. I just click once there, come off the image, freckle's gone. I don't like freckles, I'll just keep clicking, let's say, and remove freckles. I could draw, remove a bunch of freckles at the same time. There's a little blemish right here. Just draw, you can see how you get that white outline indicating where you drew. Then come off the image, you can see it took it away. Let me give you a before after. There's before and there's after. So you can see how fast you could use this tool. You could just click once on little things like blemishes, pimples, sensor spots, or if there's something larger you need to remove, just paint and you could remove it very, very easy. Click, click, click. So that is new and I think it's something that I'm going to probably be using all the time instead of using the clone brush or the um, heel brush. I'm going to be using this new content aware removal tool. So that's there under this band-aid. Now you may notice over here we have this new thing, this kind of like slider thing. All that is in the past when you used like the crop tool or you knew you used the clone or any of the tools here or use the red eye removal tool, there'd be a done button down here in the lower right hand corner. They removed the done button. You could just click here instead. Now, of course, you're in the crop tool. If you want to close the crop tool, just click on the crop tool again. You're in any of these removal, using any of these removal tools, you could just click there again and close it. So it's kind of redundant. So nothing big deal there. But what they have done, let's go to the next image. They've added a lot of new masking resources, masking tools. Uh, they have an object mask now. Let's go to masking. And you can see right here, there's an objects mask. Let me click on that. And there's two different ways you could select an object. Now in this image, I have two objects. I have the apple and I have a glass apple cider, right? Let's say I want to select the apple. Um, I could do it with a brush. So if I click on the brush here, so the brush is active, you can see I have a brush. The size of the brush with the slider. Or I could use the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. And what you could do, just paint over the apple. You don't even have to be precise. Look at this. I'm just painting over this apple. Look at that. Right? Let go. Come off the image for a sec. Bam. You have your mask over the apple. That's one way. Uh, another way is you could use what they call the rectangular marquee tool. Let me add another mask to this for the glass of cider. So I'm going to create a new mask. We're going to again create an objects mask, but this time instead of using the brush, we're going to use this rectangular marquee tool. With this tool, you have a little plus sign, and what you would do is just draw a rectangle or square over whatever you want selected. I want this glass selected, so I'll start over here, draw this rectangle over it, make sure I don't go over the apple, and make sure I got all the glass and none of the apple, and let go, and you can see we got that. Now I have the Mask for the glass active, I could come in here and maybe push exposure up a little bit. I don't know. What do I want to do here? Clarity. Add some saturation. I want to jump over to the mask I did on the apple. Just click on that one so that one's active. And I could make this more saturated. Right? Maybe make it a little brighter. 
So you can see object selection tool. That's new in Lightroom and it works pretty good overall. I found it works, works, works real well. So that's new. Now, another thing they have, which I don't think works as well is background masking. Let me go to another image. And this is a really simple image. We have the model and she's in front of a seamless paper background. And this new tool allows you to select just the background. So to do that, we'll open up masking and you can see right here, select background, right? So we'll click on that and you can see it select the background. But if you look very carefully or in between her hair, you can see that it didn't select very well around here and it has some haloing around her hair. Now, in Photoshop, you could do this and there's a uh, refine mask uh, capabilities there where you could refine the mask and you could really have it clip around her hair perfectly and it would take like 30 seconds. Unfortunately, that technology isn't here in Lightroom. Now you could try to add to the mask and you could try something like maybe, I don't know, the, the color range and you could try to then click on just the blue part here but you'll see it might select it, but it kind of selected her hair up in here as well. So this specific new mask, I believe needs some work yet. Um, but on some things it works fine. Let me show you. Um, we'll go over here. Let me close this down. We'll go to this next image and here's two women standing in front of a wall. Uh, notice here now uh, her hair, this girl on my left, isn't really fly away. It's pretty like, tight to her head and this girl is of course wearing a hat so we'll again go to masking and we'll select the background and you can see that here it did a, a very good job so I could come in here I don't know pull the exposure of the background down maybe take saturation right out or maybe you know, take it right out something like that you can see it did a pretty good job there so it's going to be hit and miss on this background masking this new background masking that's in Lightroom now, what's really cool is the next mask I'm going to show you. I'm going to go to this image and let's open up masking. You can see down here it's detecting people and we have a person detected. And you can see I could hover over that and it has the person masked. And you may be thinking, well, you could do that with the subject mask. Well, yes, you can. You could go up here, click on subject and it will detect the subject and mask the subject just like it did here. But watch this, I'm going to click on this and then I have the option of just selecting her facial skin or maybe just her body skin or maybe both her body and facial skin or maybe just her eyebrows. You can see as I click on these, we get an overlay, in this case on her eyebrows. Let's go to her eye sclera, that's the white part of her eye. Let's go to her iris and pupil. Let's go to her lips. Let's go to her teeth. Let's go to her hair. So then you could do individual masks. So let's go to, let's say her face skin, create the mask. Then we'll go to this drop down right here. You can see how the mask is over her face. We'll go down here and we'll go down here to soften skin light. I don't like softened skin. Let's do that. I'll show you why I don't like softened skin. <laughs> see how soft, soft it is, a little too soft. Let's go to soften skin light. And you, of course you do have an amount slider here and you could pull this down or up with these. See how it's only affecting her face though. So you want to add a new mask. Let's create a new mask. Let's go down to select people. Again, we have our person and this time let's do her teeth right there. And we'll create the mask for her teeth. Again, I'm going to go to this drop down and go down here to teeth whitening. And you can see we've whitened her teeth. And this, let me show you a before after real quick, right? There's before. And there's after, there's before, and there's after. Now we could continue. I could add a new mask and again, select people. We'll select our person. And this time, what do I want to do? Um, let's do her iris and pupil. So we'll click there and you can see how that selected her iris and pupil. We'll create the mask. And we do have in the drop down here, we have iris enhance. And I didn't, I don't think that did much. Let's brighten them a little more. Let's um, add some texture and add some saturation even more. It looks kind of crazy, too much, over the top, but that's easy to do. <laughs> All right, so this is new. Uh, that This is one of the new things that I think is really welcome because uh, it helps. It's just so much faster. I mean, we could do this before. We could just uh, mask with a brush 
and just brush on you know her iris and then adjust that then get a new brush a new mask brush her teeth adjust that uh, then another one brush her skin on her face do that it's just time consuming this is automatic and it's so much faster so i think this is a great new feature um in a lightroom there's before and there's after there's before and there's apple so after so there's i saw that apple and i keep saying apple anyway uh that's people masking now the last thing i'm not going to demo for fully i'm just going to show you i'm not sure how many of you may want to do this uh, let me open up all my panels so i have all the panels open oh by the way I, I forgot to show you one thing let me go back to this sorry about that let me go this let me close down that bottom panel all right what if you have more than one person you may be asking well we'll go to masking it's detecting people you can see that we have person one and if i hover over that you can see the overlay is on person one person two person three let's pick on person three because there's a problem here uh, person three is selected but you can see how it selected the arm of the lady in the middle so i'm going to create this mask and i am going to subtract from the mask with a brush and then we could come in here and remove it from that person in the middle so it's just on the person on the right i didn't do such a great job but that's that so now i don't know what do i want to do make her a little brighter then we could go back and add a new mask we could add a new people mask and we could just do this person on the left and maybe for this lady why don't we uh do something with her hair We'll create a mask for her hair. Let me make her hair a little, a little brighter and a little more saturated. So pretty cool. People masking, and it works great if you have one person in the scene or more than one person in the scene. Now, what I wanted to just kind of show you, I'm not going to do a full demonstration of this. Uh, you can see we have the right panel and the left panel. And on the right panel, as has always been in Lightroom, uh, this is our editing, right? Where we do editing in the develop module over here on the left. We have Navigator and we have collections and history and snapshots and all that stuff, right? Do you ever want to swap those? They have the right on the left and left on the right. Well, you could do that now. If you have a Mac, go up to the Lightroom Classic menu and down to Preferences. If you have a PC, go to the Edit menu and down to Preferences. Once you open Preferences, go to this tab, Interface, and you have the option to swap the left and right panel in the Develop module only or swap the left and right panel in every module so in every single module the, what was used to be the left panel will now be the right panel and vice versa so you could do it um personally i like it the way it is but if you wanted to what you would need to do let's say you just wanted to do this in the develop module you would click this you can see when you click that it disables this so you only could do one or the other so you click that and then when you close this down it's still not switched you need to close down lightroom reopen Lightroom and when you reopen Lightroom those panels will be swapped and if you want to put them back just go back up to preferences and uncheck that box and then close this down and then again you'll need to close down Lightroom reopen Lightroom and they'll be swapped back the way they were so in case you want to do that they uh, Adobe said this is for people who are left-handed I'm not sure that why that might be maybe left-handed people want it on the left I don't know but anyway it's there if you need it and you could use it. So let me know what do you think about these changes and additions in Lightroom Classic. I think rather significant. And for the first iterations of these new things, uh, that is the um, content aware remove tool, the object masking, the background masking, not so much background masking, the people masking and the swap panels. I mean, I think they work pretty well. So I think it's a welcome addition and I'm looking forward to them improving these as they update Lightroom going forward, particularly in that background masking, if they could have us have a way that we could refine the mask, particularly around a person's hair, refine the mask by their hair. I think that would be um, something that would make it much more useful. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>